Hello and welcome to Berlinale Meets, Berlinale Shorts. Being an actor in front and behind the camera is our topic today and I'm very happy to introduce to you the five guests we have of three films. Please welcome Asha Magrati. She's, uh, she acted in the film Four Nights and also produced it. And the director um, Depa Graunia is sitting next to her. Hello. And then we have Anna Vilasa. She performed in the film by Flavio and also co-wrote it together with the director Pedro Cabellera. Hello. And then we have Antonio Marziale. He wrote, performed in and directed the film Starfuckers. Hello, Antonio. So we're going to watch a little excerpt of each film to get to know a little bit the films a little bit and the people behind it. So let's watch the first excerpt from Four Nights. Did you listen to one of them? Okay, good. My little sad of some prayer, so. Sad of what already got to the demand to Sada. मैले त आज एग्री गरेर आए मैले भेनिस र टोरन्टोको प्रिमियरको कुरा पनि गरे उनीहरुलाई केही पनि प्रब्लम छैन म न होन्जेल अर्को नानीले कभर गर्छ अरे अनि सुन न थ्री नाइट्स मात्रै स्लिप ओभर गर्न पर्ने भयो त्यसमै मान्यो उनीहरुले ट्यूशनले साह्रै टाउको दुखायो नयाँ ट्राई गरेको छ हेरेर त सो आशा एन्ड दीपक एम वी आस्क यू टु टु पिक 1 मिनेट फ्रॉम योर फिल्म फॉर दिस कन्वर्सेशन एन्ड आई एम श्योर इट्स अ डिफिकल्ट डिसिजन टु पिक अ मिनेट व्हाई डिड यू पिक दिस वन सो नो आई थिंक वी डिडंट वांट इट टू गिव अवे अ लॉट ऑफ स्टोरी इन द क्लिप बट सेम टाइम आल्सो वी वर लुकिंग फॉर अ क्लिप दैट a capsule the moment of the film and this is one of the moment in the film which is crucial that my is coming from outside and she realizes that landlord has come the apartment the friends apartment they were staying in and so there is no escaping from now to making a decision going forward like they have to decide something and ram is still trying to avoid it which he had been doing all this time uh, and so i think it's so what of the character and gives away some of the bit of the film what it's about but at the same time it also does not give away the story so much so we thought maybe this is the uh, good moment to share as a trailer to excite audience but seem that not giving away the all the story and asha seeing yourself in the clip is there something you particularly like about it or something that sort of brings back the, the memories of the shooting yeah i always liked that moment uh, you know that ram ram avoid her uh, her what she is saying that is really true uh, all the time so i like that part I think, okay, we have to say that you're a couple in real life and we see a couple on screen. So we're going to talk about that later as well. Sure. <laughs> We're uh, on screen and off screen sort of merges, but it happened already. <laughs> that goes to in the scene. That's why I'm talking about. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, we're going to come back to that. So let's um, meet Anna Vilasa. Um, in the film by Flavio, can we watch the first ex uh, the excerpt from by Flavio, please? Essa boa, essa boa. 
assim. Podes fazer outra posição se quiseres. Assim. Assim? Já, assim fica boa. E assim uma dos joelhos. Já uma dos joelhos. Assim. Ok. Queres mais? Deixa ver o que é que já tens. Acho que eu gostei de todas. Ah, esta está boa. Esta ficou boa. Ah, esta... Sim, esta está ok. Esta não, porque o cabelo está muito... Não, esta não, esta não. Sim, sim. Este cabelo... Tenta lá mais duas. Duas ou três. Estás? Ok. Assim, tipo... So, Anna and Pedro, answer the question, why this moment? Um, well, uh, I think it, it is a similar reason uh, as the pack that is uh, not to reveal a lot of, of the film. And also because uh, uh, when, I, when I want to promote by Flavio, I, I didn't want to people to know a lot about the film because I want the first contact with the film has to be something of not knowing what is going to happen next. So for me, by Flavio is this idea of a film that uh, as long as you are seeing it, you don't realize what can be happening next. So that's why uh, we choose this moment because it is the first shot of the film. And also in uh, personal terms, it is a very uh, important moments since it was really the first shot we filmed in the film so it is the starting point of everything in the, the starting point of the shooting and also the starting point of the narrative of the film so I think that there are these two reasons there are these two reasons you know, one in the personal side and the other one in more about promotional side and Anna what what is what do you like a lot about this scene um, well, to be honest, the first time I saw the film, uh, it was the scene I uh, liked the least. Uh, but uh, now it's one of the scenes I like the most because of how imperfect it is. Um, in the sense that she's, we are used to seeing all these uh, people pose in a perfect way and we see the end result of that always. And the fact that she's a little bit like, okay, what am I doing? And kind of like confident, but not uh, at the same time. Uh, I just really like how imperfect it all is. And I also think it speaks uh, a lot about my relationship with Rodrigo, um, the boy who plays Flavio, uh, because uh, Marcy and Flavio uh, have this, um, chemistry and, and the relationship that he's always taking pictures of her and me and Rodrigo also built that a lot on the backstage uh, he was always teasing me and saying oh uh, you need to wear this makeup and those clothes and blah blah so and maybe I have to fill the audience in a little bit in the story without giving away too much but basically um, Marcia in the in the film is a social media addict almost photographing herself all the time, has a little um, son and, yes. and then she's invited on a date and doesn't know what to do with the son, where to, <clears throat> where to keep him during that time. So just a little glimpse of your, the story of your film for the audience. Um, and before we go into more detail, we move on to Starfuckers. So let's watch an excerpt from Starfuckers, please. Antonio, why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of shorter than it's quite it's quite short. Um, but for for me, similar to the other two directors as well, it doesn't give away too much of the film. And it's an intimate moment between the two characters. So we kind of mm, get to be with them 
in in almost like a private moment between them while also um keeping the integrity of the um, any surprise in the film that might come up yeah and do you want to maybe fill in the audience a little bit what is the story of your film i think it's better if i don't do it and you guys do it <laughs> sure um the the movie explores power dynamics in hollywood and a film director and um an escort are sharing a night together when um a third party arrives who it turns out knows both of them um in a way that sort of unfolds throughout the film mm -hmm. thank you and um when i watched those three scenes there there were two things that occurred to me and maybe we could elaborate on these two elements one is in all three of them, there is another person. It's not only you performing, but also there is somebody you're playing with. So can you talk a little bit, all three of you, about this? And how far does the person you're playing with shapes your performance? And, and <coughs> Because it's different kind of couples. It's <coughs> husband and wife, it's mother and son, and it's two friends, I guess. Mm. Um, and can you tell us a bit about this sort of I guess you did the casting. How did you cast your counterpart? And how does that influence your performance and the, the way you, you create your character? Asha, maybe you want to start? I am the last person, but uh, thank you so much. <laughs> um, uh, actually, uh, first uh, we thought, uh, Maybe he's going to play himself, uh, Deepak, but uh, he's not good with acting. And uh, we tried to uh, find uh, who looks like uh, him, but um, it was a little bit hard to find. And uh, we choose uh, uh, that character who play Ram, who is playing Ram, and. Uh, we, we, we are working together from a long time and we know him and uh, he knows very well uh, that Ram character. So uh, we thought it is easy for us also. And uh, I also know him personally and uh, uh, also, and we worked uh, from a long time. Uh, so um, I know him also very well. So we thought uh, the dynamics will be uh, good to uh, uh, each other's. And it was a little bit hard for me because I know that Ram character very well. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, it was hard for me to find him, that Ram, what I know. Uh, but we managed that and he tried uh, very hard and he did also and sometimes i was like oh no what he's doing uh, at the at the moment well, I mean, at the shooting moment um but uh, he did really good job he did really well uh, and we are happy for him so you say you know the ram character very well because you co-wrote it or yes or because it's yes. your husband? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we co-wrote it together and uh, we tried to... Uh, uh, this story uh, is inspired from our life and uh, we adopt um, also... Not adopt... Uh, what's it called exactly? Um, yeah, yeah. inspired, adopted from what we have personal experience also living in New York. So I think as I was trying to fill in is that uh, she was imagining me or like she was imagining us in being in Ram uh, there. So for her, sometimes it was a bit hard to detach for thinking of real Ram to be an actor. And so it was, uh, that was distracting sometimes. But meantime, also like Daya and uh, Asa was acting for third time together, being a pair. They were in the highway together. They were in White Sun, uh, two pieces, uh, last two pieces together. So they knew each other very well, and they inspired each other's acting very well because they worked really well together. So we had a script, and we started to improvise, and we 
in a way, let go of the script and we did all the improvising on the set. Uh, so they really played together. We started to transcribe what we're improvising and we took it from there. So there were a lot of things that we're bringing together. And the two, films, the two films you mentioned, they were feature films. I think they premiered in Venice and in uh, Toronto, I believe. Oh, well, well, uh, one was premiered in Berlin in 2020. Ah, yeah, sure, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope nobody sees this. But <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right, same was uh, in Toronto, but both of them were features and they played against each other, so I think they were appear in the both of those films. Yeah, so they were feature films, and we also, the, the uh, actor who plays Daya Hang Rai. Uh, his, his name is Daya Hang Rei, and yeah. when we researched him, we realized when he posted that Four Nights will be show, on his Instagram will be shown at Berlinale, he got more hearts and likes than I think any Berlinale post ever got. I mean, this man is big. I, I how many? I wrote it down somewhere. He has four hundred thousand followers or something, and that post got nine thousand hearts, and we were like, "Wow, what's going on?" <laughs> so. Yeah, He's so a big star in Nepal because we uh, did a highway in 2011, we shot in 2011, and that was his first uh, like collaboration with us, or second collaboration because he had assisted me in a short film earlier. So he was not a star until 2011, but right after that he did a film called Lut, uh, which became a big, star, big mm -hmm. hit in Nepal in the commercial industry. So he's really a huge star. So this was our fourth collaboration together. And can I ask you, Asha, because that's also, um, I'm sure Antonio can also relate to that and maybe also Anna. How can you separate yourself personally from the script again and become an actress and, as you say, accept the way he performs, Ram, although it might not be what you imagined? Like, is there a kind of a ritual or a technique or whatever to become sort of like an empty actress again? and not the script writer anymore, or the person who experienced this experience. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Um, well, um, for me, I found it easier um, because I had been with her for so long now. Um, I, I thought about her in so many ways. We revised the script so many times and we rewrote it uh, that when I got to the point that I was actually <clears throat> preparing to shoot um, it was kind of like flowing like water so uh, <clears throat> in a way I wish all my experiences as an actor were as a script writer as well uh, it's kind of addictive I don't know if you both feel the same as well but I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I felt so much more connected and uh, loved her so much more because I was in the making of her before I got the script. And uh, but, yeah. but Asha and Anna, you both had a director, so you still have an outside eye that can direct you. Antonio, in your case, I don't know how you did it, but you directed yourself. And it's sort of two different energies you need as actor and as director. Can you tell us about that dilemma? Yeah, that was uh, definitely a challenge to, to come overcome in the film, for sure. Like, as an actor, which is predominantly where I have my work, there's a privilege of trusting that the director is watching you. <clears throat> and you really just get to be present to the circumstances and allow yourself just to be there. Um, when you're adopting both roles, what I realized quite early on is that I had to really give myself a moment to transition from one into the other, um, so that uh, because it's it's quite a it's quite a vulnerable thing to 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 act maybe a little bit more so sometimes than than directing and it's uh, to me directing is quite forward and. Uh, acting sometimes is really about like receiving, so it was a shift that you kind of have to make in the in the car a little bit. But once I became consciously aware that I required that shift, it became it became easier. But when you're working with another actor like Cole Doman, who's a good friend of mine and such a, a brilliant actor in his own right, and our chemistry is great because we're 
good friends and we had talked so much about these characters and who they are <clears throat> that it definitely was easier because of the chemistry that that we had but it was definitely about creating boundaries around like okay we're in the scene like obviously no notes during the scene and then afterwards we kind of step out talk about it and then back in and then having producers as well on set who can look at monitor for you and kind of be your eyes who understand the aesthetic of the film so you're not having to carry a hundred percent of the weight all the time and can i ask again about is there a certain <clears throat> technique to jump from one to the other from directing to acting like is there a certain i don't know you have to have a coffee or i, I have no idea <laughs> but sort of to shift it's a great question i did not have one but if if i were to do it again i think i would <clears throat> because it's um it's it's challenging and and when you're when you're going when you're becoming like when you're the director everyone who's working on the movie gives you little feedback and then you get to consolidate it and bring it to an actor but when you're the director and the actor then you step into the acting role like everyone comes to you with their like little opinions about like your performance and they're like ah like just one person you know so after a while we learned like okay it needs to come from one person and i needed to create like an environment for myself to also allow myself to be the actor you know because it's so important when you're acting to to trust that like you can't watch yourself and be in a scene at the same time so you do need to create a distinction between those two things and i think like like you said some sort of gesture like maybe drinking a coffee or or something to kind of separate yourself from one to the other if i were to do it again i would definitely just be more clear with myself about the the different the differences and asha did you have something like this to sort of say okay i'm now in the role i'm not the scriptwriter anymore i'm not the producer anymore i'm the actor yeah um i i must do that but uh, most of the time i am uh, i distract a lot uh, i distract a lot it is really uh, not working sometimes but i must do that and uh, deepak is there always he when oh knock knock you are off now come back <laughs> in your character so he helps me but uh, it's really distract uh, to me but basically when i i do the casting also and uh, if i'm working with co actor uh, and uh, all my concentrate uh, is going with that uh, character uh, that co actor what what he's doing oh he's not supposed to do that ah, the dialects so uh, you know <laughs> i forget myself <laughs> i'm not uh, in front of the camera uh, camera <laughs> but ah uh, oh, no what i'm doing and again he's there and uh, and sometime oh, i don't know this dialect supposed to be like that i mean yeah that, it happens to me but uh, um i must have to come back on my character and uh, deepak is always there i don't know without him what i will do but uh, <laughs> yes uh, and there's one thing that all the three scenes have in common which is that within the scene we see a performance so in mm. your case in the uh, in the case of four nights we see the little laptop and you are actually the actress in the little laptop performing a scene in by flavio you are performing for the selfie which we never get to see but it is a performance within the film and in in starfuckers it's the moment where you shift into the drag um performance is the first moment so and then the performances we see later on is well in starfuckers we get to see it in four nights we always just get little glimpses of the film and in by flavio i think we never see the result of the selfies but we see a lot of processes <laughs> of making them <laughs> Can you tell us these different kinds of performances why were they the starting point of the film maybe was that why you made this film and were they made for the film in the case of four nights for example i don't know who wants to start but sort of this kind this yeah no you know what i mean uh, i'm not sure how to crystallize this question better <laughs> 
For, is that, uh, for, for nights, is the film White Sun? <coughs> so it is not made for the film, it is an old film that it's you used to uh, it. it's a, uh, Because they show it is set in the time of like editing White Sun. And so we were using actual lights and footage to uh, editing in the process. So in both of the actor in the film and four nights are also in the White Sun. Mm -hmm. So somebody was trying to rep uh, represent both of their like performing, being outside in the same time and have kind of similar scenarios in both like uh, husband and wife in White Sun has. Uh, and there is a... But, and, yeah. There is a crucial sentence. I forgot to write it down, but um, in the in the little clip in the that we see on the laptop, she says something like, um, "I wish I could be there with you." Or I, I I wanted to see you too. Yeah, and I had the feeling the whole film that's all he needs. That she, for real, mm -hmm. for once, says yeah. this sentence to him, and then he's fine. I don't know. Am I right? Am I wrong? But I had the feeling that's the starting yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He is like, uh, even when she was away for him, that becomes the center, that becomes the footage for having that connection on the screen with her, like being in that room, he editing so much, seeing her so much, but that distance, that disconnect between them is there because uh, she's not there anymore mm. by his side. So he's kind of like making that connection with the film. And um, actually, she also wants to say that she wants to see him also, but uh, because of the circumstance, circumstance and the situations, uh, uh, she it's, had to make yeah. hard decision. And and Pedro, was it in your case this sort of selfie culture? Was that a starting point for the film, or? Yeah. <clears throat> In fact, it was the, really the starting point of the whole idea because uh, it was based on uh, uh, the, we have another scriptwriter with us that is Joe, and uh, he saw during the 2018 summer in Nazaré in Portugal, he saw this dynamic between the mother and the son of taking a lot of photos in the beach. So it was the main starting point. This uh, uh, this idea, this concept of uh, Someone who needs help, so she goes to his son to, to take the photos. But also uh, me and Anna, mainly because Anna started to enter a lot in this world of uh, uh, influencers, one of influencers, Instagrammers. And uh, so one thing that was really important on the first shot and on this idea of performance is the way that how you can change your body by posing. So the film in the beginning deals a lot with this idea of uh, creating your own body and, uh, and uh, uh, this idea of uh, creating your own body by uh, changing the body position. And also lately, lately, you don't see an exact an exact moment of the opening shot, but you see another selfie that she took uh, probably during this <laughs> uh, a big moment of taking uh, photos in the in the beach. She you, you can see her. Uh, creating her own body uh, with an app mm -hmm. uh, where she like can by editing the, her own yeah. body. So this, yes, this idea of performing performing to a selfie and how you can change the way uh, your body can be seen, um, it was, yes, one of the starting points of, of the film. And it's very confusing because Antonio's camera keeps freezing, at least in my you. I don't know what it's like yeah, for yeah, you. So whenever you spoke about changing the body, his camera freezes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Antonio, are you back? Yeah. Oh, frozen again. But at least you're laughing now. That's better. <laughs> and, um, can I ask you, because in the film there is this rapper, the real Schulz, and yeah. I was so excited because we managed to find him on Instagram. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think by yeah. now his account is private, but I think I'm still a follower. I think I managed to follow him yeah, before no. it got private. And I think he has 200 <laughs> followers or something or yeah. posted five posts. So the real Schulz, is he real? No. No, no he's we, an actor. Yeah. And do we, <laughs> we change the, the, the algorithms of Instagram. I hope Instagram doesn't find it, but like in the real life, we create the Instagram to have the basis. So he has only like 200 uh, followers, but in the film, he has like 
nine uh, ninety thousand uh, followers and uh, certified like as he is uh, a famous Portuguese rapper. But it there is, is a music video, and I mean on YouTube. Did you make the music video for yes, the film so and then didn't create, use it? Yes, we created the the entire um, identity of the rapper with Tiago, who is the, the actor. He is the one we're singing. We produced the musics, we made the music videos, so we create all wrote these... Wrote the songs. Wrote the songs, yeah. yeah. We create the entire oh, wow. identity of the rapper. But in the end, in the film, it just appears like, a, I think, like five seconds of uh, one of the music videos that we made. Which but, is a shame, because they are great. Yeah. <laughs> in the sense that, I mean, uh, Tiago's transformation into that role, I was so blown away by him. He is so great. Like. He is singing, he's rapping, you know, that's yeah. like, yeah, he's so and, good. And it's you, Anna, in the music video? No, 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 no. no. no, no. That was another, another girl, like another mom. So this, this, yeah, this, there's this idea that then it will be the next uh, girl in the next music video of, of him. So, okay. Yeah. No, we were very excited, like, oh, I found the real shows. <laughs> 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 and Antonio, the, the performance, where, what are the sound bites? Where do they come from? So I, um, I recorded those voices in a recording studio. Uh, I actually, uh, in LA, there's a website where you can hire a Marilyn Monroe impersonator. And I emailed a couple of people, but nobody responded to me. So I was just like, I'm going to try and do it myself. And I went in and with recording the voices, I actually like, I think it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Like, I think it, it works. So I kept it all um, my voice with what I had written. And that was really helpful to for people to um, get an understanding of the world I was building so that, you know, when I sent the script to people, I said, you know, play the MP3 because that was the first thing that I had generated um, performance wise so that they could put their headphones in and read along with the script to really immerse themselves in the world. Ah, uh, so it's not excerpts, it's not TikTok like sort of excerpts from other movies or from no, you know, no, interviews. That's all, yeah, it's all no, scripted it's, by you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, I didn't realize. I thought it was sort of found footage from maybe also old Hollywood days or whatever. Yeah, my, my producer was like, how are we going to be able to use all the rights for this? And I was like, no, no, don't worry, it's, <laughs> I, it's fine. <clears throat> yeah. And so what is it that um, fascinates you about drag? Why did you decide to incorporate it in the film? What is it you like about it? <clears throat> to me, drag performers really can, you know, anyone, a lot of um, drag performers exist outside of like a normative identity and it really allows them to create a space for themselves to create an alter ego. Like I have so many drag queen friends who really transform when they're on stage and it gives themselves permission to be someone else. And I've always been so inspired by that, that art form and how people can use it to um, really empower themselves and and tell stories that they themselves as individuals might be a little bit too shy to. It really gives permission for something to come through. And I wanted to make sure that the character had a lot of agency and, and power. And to me, drag queens really hold so much of that uh, ferocity in their performances. And so I thought it would be a nice way and kind of a surprising way to take revenge on someone. Mm -hmm. We have three minutes left. So if you have any questions for each other, now is the moment. I, I have a question. Yes, shoot. Uh, I'm curious, Deepak, in, in your guys' film, the use of sound is so specific, even before the movie starts with the sound of the, um, the truck. How did, did, was that, did you incorporate that after you shot or what's your relationship to sound throughout the film and how much did you consider it while making the movie? So uh, we had initially thought about like doing the whole story through, I had even written 30 pages script, uh, written from the perspective of wife. 
where she is going out and she is seeing the world. And so the whole story was from her perspective, but pandemic hit. There was no way we could find the way to shoot from the her perspective uh, anymore. We could not afford to do it as, as well. As well. It was difficult to do during the pandemic. So we thought, uh, read your the script from the perspective of her husband. And when we situated it to be inside the apartment, the only way for me was thinking like, how do I can bring that outside world uh, and be present of the New York, how I had mm -hmm. made it like it's very New York story. And sound was the only way to think about it. Also, uh, last couple of years, as I was watching more of the song films and I was getting more inspired of like how to finding a way how I can write with sound and pictures together. Because one of my weakness uh, growing because I didn't come from film school and learning. So my weakness always had been is like I was thinking on in the picture only and ignoring most of the sound. So I did that a bit with the white sound. I tried and I was trying to enhance that more as I go with as what I can put the sound work. If that makes sense. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I wanted to bring out, oh, please go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. <laughs> I just wonder, uh, like uh, some, the way we started to make film uh, in Nepal, and I think it came in a way we necessarily doing multiple roles, but recently I have decided to appreciate it, like it feels like empowering to be able to do multiple roles, especially editing and having a partner who can act for you and write together and doing a collaborative uh, in the environment. But sometimes it's seen as like, like limited budget or something embarrassing. We even get asked in members as we travel, like why multiple roles, why she's acting in there. And I was thinking like how you guys feel about it. And we have personally started to think it feels like more empowering to be able to do it. If you think you agree, or like, what's your perspective on it, and what was your experience like collaborating together or doing it so? Um, doing it together. Yeah. Um, uh, well, uh, I don't know if you uh, share the same opinion as me, but uh, I uh, see Pedro as my counterpart, not only in life but creatively. I think like we bounce off each other's idea very well, uh, and. Uh, I mean, uh, we like the same things and also different things, but we like the same films and uh, we enjoy the same kind of storytelling. And uh, I think um, it, em em I, I guess it empowered me to work with you because um, it, it freed me as an actress as well uh, to have that kind of connection and uh, that kind of deep trust um, in the director I was working with. Uh, and also like the opinions, I totally get what you mean by like outsiders opinions about that kind of stuff. But I mean, opinions are opinions and people are always gonna have opinions anyway. Um, so, I, yeah. so I guess that's that. Uh, you know, I kind of like try to brush it off and um, do our thing. And uh, uh, I commend you for doing the same because I think it's a great, like, for us, it, for me, it was a great experience. I don't know if you mm. have anything to no, add no, to no, that. No. Or... no, it was great. Yeah. And uh, also I had a question if we still have time for Antonia. <laughs> Just quickly yeah. for the audience. So you are a couple as well. And yes. you have a wonderful little daughter of the age of two. Yes. Yeah. So yes, go Anna, your question. <laughs> yes, I have a question uh, for Antonio. Uh, first of all, let me just say I was completely blown away by your performance. And at the end, I was oh. crying with you like real tears. Oh. Um, and and I, yeah, it's true. It's, it's true. true. I'm not sorry. lying. Uh, and uh, uh, I was just wondering, how um, did you prepare for all of that? And now I'm more blown away because I know you wrote all of that and like tweaked the voices and stuff. Like, how did you prepare for that? Uh, and also because you were directing at the same time, how does one do that? 
Yeah, we, I knew we had to get that in, in one take. So it was quite stressful. But the great thing about having the, the uh, music already done was that I knew how it was going to sound. So all I had to do was just memorize it, memorize it. So I went over it like every day so much that like the experience of, you know, watching it where it all happened, like you almost don't really know what's coming out was sort of my experience while doing it as well, because it, you know, I just listened to it so many times that I, I became sort of like sec like just one with it, you know, so that there was no option but to to get it because we had so limited time. Uh, but when you're able to control like with the performance, because I knew how it was going to sound, it really helped me feel confident because I knew what to expect. And then it was just about being really present and yeah, just just staying with it. Was it one of those moments that rarely happened that you felt like you're almost like flying that you were not in that? Yes. Okay. Yes, it did not. Yeah, it felt like something else was kind of coming through me. And because it's so fast, you have no choice but to be like, what? <laughs> like, here we go. You know, you just kind of commit to it and and hope that your mouth can kind of keep up. <laughs> well, bravo, really. Thank you, yeah. thank you so much. It's yeah. so lovely to meet everyone. Uh, will you be, uh, will you do it again? <laughs> Maybe if, if we choose to expand the world of it into something longer, that will probably be a part of it, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Because I remember, I think, Nuri Bel Salam, the Turkish director, talking about, I think it's climate, that he acted uh, with his wife together in the film. And I think it was Bernal Benjibel, and he was saying that that was his first and last experience that he would not act in his, his film again. <laughs> that it was <laughs> difficult for him to do in the, both of the roles and being in the set. I think it's amazing to be able to yeah. handle that both. And still bringing that performance that you have in the film. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, the performance uh, was really, really great. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and uh, it was really nice. And um, uh, good name. Um, Anna. Uh, Anna, uh, you were so powerful woman in that movie. Oh my God. So I was like, uh, I want to be like that powerful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You were so heart shattering as well. Oh, <laughs> that's a beautiful way to end this beautiful conversation. I thank you so much. I, I want to actually add something. What I also like very much about these three films is um, that in a sometimes very subtle way, they defy stereotypes in four nights. It could, I thought it was interesting that you first wrote it from the, her perspective and then shifted because I thought it's also a portrait of a housekeeper. It's also a portrait of somebody who works in a household and we actually see the person behind the cleaning and the taking care. So I thought it was very interesting, this shift of perspective and looking behind the facade. And in Starfuckers, of course, this Me Too from a male perspective or a gay perspective. I thought was very interesting. And in by Flavio is, um, I didn't find, I think for me that was the first example when a woman doesn't get punished for wanting to have fun. Usually when a woman, especially when she has sex, she always yes. gets punished. Either because the child has to die or suffer or something or she herself and it's very often indirectly. And I was just so happy that she wants to have something, she gets it, and she doesn't get punished. So thank you very much for, <laughs> for defying that trope as well. So, yes, thanks again for this beautiful conversation and um, all the best. Thank you thank very you. much. Bye-bye. Nice bye. Yeah, lovely to meet you all. Yeah, nice to meet you.